सेवंथ हाउस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट हाउसेज ऑफ हॉरोस्कोप बट वेरी मिस अंडरस्टूड पीपल थिंक दैट सेवंथ हाउस इज फॉर मैरिज ओनली मैरिज कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स अ वेरी बिग पार्ट ऑफ सेवंथ हाउस बट सेवंथ हाउस इज नॉट ओनली मैरिज इट इज मल्टीपल अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो now with respect to you know planets in 7000 how they behave in marriage i have already made a video a link for which i will leave you in the description so you can watch that other than that what does the 7th house indicate 7th house indicate karma 7th house indicate love right so simply put if the you see with 7th lord if the seventh lord is powerful only then one can actually love people it's not only love towards your spouse but the love is towards the society also if the seventh lord is powerful or if there is a powerful planet in seventh house only then one have you know this was to have kutumbakam that we say right that you think that whole world is your own family and you want to serve the whole world this only comes when seventh lord is powerful these people because they have great love towards the society also succeed well if they open an ngo or go into social work in the good in ngo etc whereas if the seventh house lord is weak in that particular scenario one can be very much self focused and generally such people are only focused towards their own life that my own life is good you know my family members are getting what they want then it is enough right they don't worry much about other things so this one particular thing is there in fact if the seventh lord is many a times what happens you see a seventh lord is powerful but it is afflicted by malefics in that particular scenario if one helps the people in society do some donations charity etc then they do it with some ulterior motive ulterior motive of name fame status and all of these things whereas on the other hand if the seventh lord is not afflicted only in that particular scenario one does these social activities with the real intention of helping people so whenever it comes to deciding whether the person is actually you know actually what he shows or he is faking you have to check the seventh house when the seventh house lord is afflicted i have seen that person carries on a fake personality for very long whereas if the seventh house lord is powerful beneficial in that particular scenario one is a very genuine personality right so seventh lord planet and seventh house both have to be taken into consideration these significations are also very prominently used in prashna so if a prashna is made about sexual copulation and if you see malefics in the 7th house it is told that one will have sexual copulation after fights and all of these things whereas if there are benefics in the 7th house it will indicate a amicable lovely physical relationship this should be taken in birth horoscopes also if the 7th house is having beneficial planets or 7th lord is with benefics then in that particular scenario person generally have very smooth amicable sexual relationships these people have regular sexual relationships in their life and their sexual wishes and desires are fulfilled by their sexual partners in fact their sexual partners want to have you know physical relationship with them and they enjoy this particular area whereas on the other hand if the seventh house is having malefics or the seventh lord is influenced by malefics in that particular scenario one largely remains unsatisfied in sexual relationships they have to compromise in sexual relationships their sexual desires are not met their sexual appetite is not properly satisfied and generally these people have to fight for sexual relationships or these people have to struggle a lot to maintain sexual relationships with people they want like they have to fight for physical intimacy to happen in their life and they are largely dissatisfied into it not only that because seventh house indicates sexuality a strong powerful healthy seventh lord is very essential if you want to actually enjoy sexuality you know have complete enjoyment of it 
if the seventh lord is afflicted by planets in that particular scenario either the partner unwillingly participates in physical relationships right so do penetration may happen but the satisfaction is not there the contentment of the heart is not there and in multiple cases when the affliction is heavy then generally while copulating or while having physical relationships person is disturbed so the person is not finding appropriate place or appropriate mood to have physical relationships and in that physical relationships also either the person is disturbed by some external circumstances or disturbed by internal weakness right so in this particular sense whether one will be able to satisfactorily satisfy their life partners or will satisfy their partners or not should also be seen with respect to seventh house when the seventh lord is weak and afflicted when the seventh lord is weak one is not able to satisfy their life partners when the seventh lord is afflicted one is not able to satisfy themselves in the sexual relationships this comes from the seventh house right also the desire of love right only when the seventh house what i have seen when the seventh house is influenced by benefics seventh lord is also influenced by benefics person generally have you know like person can enjoy love in entirety seventh house is having beneficial planet seventh lord is influenced by benefics then only the person can enjoy love in entirety that means physical relationships are also there care is also there satisfaction is also there contentment is also there when the seventh lord is afflicted when the seventh house is afflicted by malefics in that particular scenario you see only one thing is there if physical relationships are there then the spouse does not really care for you right or if the life partner cares for you then physical relationship and all other things are not there so an afflicted seventh house does indicate that things are not completely present and some or other level of compromise is there that have to be kept in mind now the seventh house also indicates traveling gamanagaman is indicated by seventh house traveling and all these things are also indicated by the seventh house now you see in prashna when we talk of travel and there are malefics in the seventh house it indicates a successful travel whereas benefics it is opposite whereas benefics in the seventh house indicates that travel may not happen or there can be dangers in travel talking of horoscope you should see what is stronger either lagna or the seventh house if lagna is more powerful then one should stay at their birth place one should stay in their country but if the seventh house is powerful then staying away from country settling to different lands settling to foreign land will be more beneficial for the native and such people who have a seventh lord powerful if they don't settle to foreign lands if they continue to live near their birthplace then their life is not successful and multiple good yogas of their horoscopes are compromised and good results are compromised also so for those looking to settle at foreign lands want to go to foreign lands they need a strong and powerful seventh house most importantly malefics in seventh house are very good for foreign settlement and this is very good very beneficial for you also also what i have seen that when seventh house is having strong beneficial planets in natal chart in prashna of travel malefics in seventh house indicate good successful travel benefics in seventh house are problematic in prashna it is reverse in natal chart when benefic good planets are influencing the seventh house then in that particular scenario person generally travels a lot travels a lot means they have enough resources enough money they have vehicle and all of these things to travel and the person can frequently travel that means they don't have much financial responsibility they enjoy a level of financial freedom otherwise people cannot enjoy right so this is there if benefics or strong planets are influencing the seventh house one often travels so they have professional freedom to travel they have financial security to travel and they have resources like vehicle etc for traveling right so in profession in financial freedom and in possession of things such as vehicle etc the analysis of seventh house becomes important in this particular way 
On the other hand, if there are malefics connected to seventh house, then generally people while traveling, either they can meet with accidents or they can meet with unfortunate events such as, you know, be meeting with thieves, etc. while on traveling or they can have health problems while on traveling. So these people should travel as much less as possible and whenever they are traveling, they should take proper precautions. Otherwise, they can meet with unfortunate events which will not be good. In any case, what I have seen that if there is a strong planet connected to 7th house, you should travel at least once a month. If not to distant places, then at nearby places, this brings you fortune. A strong planets connected to 7th house, the more you travel, more fortunate you become. And generally, such people get good ideas, good offers, good opportunities, and meet those people who can benefit them in one way or the other while they are traveling. So when you have a strong planet connected to 7th house, a good remedy for the planet a good remedy to enjoy 100% result of the planet will be travel. So travel to remedy your seventh house is a very super, very powerful remedy, right? That you should keep in mind. Not only that, sometimes people think that eighth house is the house of Dory. Like Dory is a bad word, right? Like Dory is misunderstood nowadays. People think that Dari is you take money from your life partner and it is supported by Hinduism. That is not. Dai Bhag is the real thing which is supported by Hinduism. And in Dai Bhag, basically what happens that before marriage, you are a family member. You live with your mother, father and your siblings. But after marriage, you are supposed to have your separate livelihood. And then for the separate livelihood, everyone from the society, mother, father of the lady, mother, father of the boy and everyone else of the society donates something to the couple so that they can start their marital life and at least one, two next years of marital life are tension free. They have things for their arrangement and they can actually enjoy. This mutual contribution from everyone in the society was the Dai Bhag, which later took the bad form of dowry, which is a bad practice. So this Dai Bhag, what you get from society out of marriage or in current scenario, the dowry, or what you get from your life partner, people think is indicated by the seventh house. Maybe they did not have understood good astrology. It is signified from the seventh house only. So in the case of a male horoscope, now this thing is there. In the case of male horoscope, if the seventh house lord is powerful, if the seventh house is connected with a powerful planet, then in that particular scenario, your life partner comes from a rich family. So you also get benefited from that particular wealth. Or your life partner is professionally active. Your life partner is also working. So you have a financial support. If none of this is happening, then in that scenario, understand that your life partner is having great professional skills. And if you motivate them to work, if you motivate them to have their own business or start their own endeavor, they can be greatly successful. At least in any case, if you have a strong beneficial planet, strong planet or beneficial planet connected to your seventh house, you should not ignore your life partner for males. And you should take active advice from your life partners in your profession. In fact, I will tell you, take every professional decision only after consulting your life partner and see how greatly you will benefit. That your success and uh, name, fame, status and money will increase 100% that I can guarantee provided the fact that strong or beneficial planets are connected to 7th house. If malefics are connected to 7th house, then in that particular scenario, many a times person because of relationships, because of love affairs tend to ignore their, you know, family life, professional life or other aspects of life. And generally such people because of relationships and affairs and other such things can also destroy their own lives, you know, miss opportunities and all of these things. So those who have malefic planets connected with seventh house, they should be very, very careful not to ignore other areas of life being mad in love, but they should have a practical approach. Otherwise, things will be problematic. For female horoscope, the more powerful the seventh lord is, more beneficial planets connected to seventh house indicate more influential and more successful your life partner will be. 
and only in this case you can expect your life partner to be rich, influential, fortunate. In female horoscope, if malefics are connected to the seventh house in that particular scenario, your life partner after marriage may struggle from financial issues. And you may have to be ready to help and support them. Right? You, right? you should be ready to help and support them and also should advise them to you know, not take much risks in their life and not do those things which can land them into problems. Weak planet connected to 7th house. See, 7th house, as I told you also, is related to sexuality. Primarily related to sexuality. And weak planet connected to 7th house does indicate weak, weak sexuality. Here, the life partner are not able to satisfy each other. And because of which marital life is not very good, multiple times this becomes a reason for divorce also. Right? So weak planet should, also, should always be seen as sexual weakness lack of satisfaction and when multiple weak planets are connected with the seventh house then in that particular scenario almost no enjoyment of sexual life is there so weakness should always be interpreted in this particular way and this should be kept in mind so what you gain from your life partner is also seen with respect to seventh house now you see seventh house as I have just talked about that when malefics are connected with 7th house or not only malefics, see some planets are instigators, you know, some planet instigate you for things. Passion planets, Venus, Moon, Mars, Sun. These are passion planets. And when these passion planets are connected with the seventh house, when moon and Venus are connected to the seventh house, what I have seen that one becomes so much engaged into relationships, one becomes so mad about relationships that many a times they are completely focused on relationships only. Right? Their only aim in life is sexual enjoyment and they ignore working on other areas of life and ultimately at one point of time where complete responsibility is on their shoulders and everyone else is not able to help them, they realize what great mistake they have done. So they should avoid doing this. When a planet like Sun and Mars are connected to the seventh house, then in that scenario, I have seen that sometimes these people can be very much self-centered. And these people may think that I am everything. These people sometimes can be overconfident that I will be able to pull out anything and everything will happen good. Specifically when these planets are weak because certainly when Mars or Sun is connected to 7th house but these planets are powerful on Rashi, Vargotta, Mool, Trikon, etc. They will not show bad results, right? This is basic that you all already know. Other than that, when Mars and Saturn, when Mars and Sun are connected to the seventh house, in that scenario, it may indicate that the person is very much self-engrossed. He thinks that I am everything, whatever I think is very brilliant, whatever I think is very super, and I will be able to do anything. Whereas when it comes for the testing, they fail themselves. So these people should not overestimate themselves and should always have a practical approach for their betterment. Otherwise, the shock that will come later on will be very, very great. Not only this, seventh house indicates smoke also. And what I have seen that when Saturn and Rahu are connected to the seventh house, then this smoke traits become very powerful. Now, because of the smoke trait, when Saturn and Rahu are connected to seventh house for long, say up to the age of 40, 45, the contribution of the person towards their family, the contribution of the person to, in the society, the contribution of the person in the profession is not well recognized and some, and the person is underestimated. People don't respect the native, people don't value the native. And more importantly, he is also not much concerned about his own value. He just, you know, does not work on this regard and keep you know, like these people generally don't have much problem with bad things happening in their life. They somehow compromise. And because of this compromise, they never get what they deserve. So my advice to these people will be that don't ignore things. And if someone is not respecting you and if you are not being valued, learn to show your value and don't just live with this. Right? Do this because you can be undervalued. You can be underappreciated. You can be denied your credit work work in this area secondarily 
when these planets are connected to the seventh house, then what I have seen that until and unless these planets are powerful, it makes the native confused also. Generally, these people are just passing times in their profession also. They are like, you know, I want to work. Why I want to work, they don't know. They just want to work. In that work also, they don't think about their progress. They don't think that whether this job is good for me or not, whether this job will give me progress or not, whether I want fame or I want power or I want money. They don't realize that. They just have a particular thing that I just want to work. I just want to work any type of work I want to do, anything I want to work, but I just want to work. So generally, these people can be very adamant on doing one thing and may not actually realize why to do it, how to do it. Right? They are just very mean on I want to work or I want to do, th do this thing or I want to get this thing, but they may not actually sit and think that why I am doing this, what are my actual requirements, will it give me happiness or not? Whatever this thing is costing, is it worthy or not? They don't think over it, right? So it becomes problematic. So this is also something that have to be filtered out when Rahu and Saturn are connected to the seventh house. Smoke can be there, confusion can be there. You should sit down and you should think that whatever I am doing, is it necessary to be done? Can it done in other ways? Can it be done in a better way? What it is costing me, is it worthy? These things, they... These things you should think, otherwise it will be very problematic. Not only this one thing is there, seventh house is known as ast. Ast means setting. Now this setting is in two regards. The setting of life, Zindagi ki sanj, what we call in Hindi, the setting of life, the fag end of life is also seen with respect to the seventh house for this reason, seventh house is mark also. Right. The setting sun, the evening sun is also seen with respect to seven thousand. Now, one thing you understand. The planet is rising in the ascendant and the planet who is rising is considered a powerful planet. And any planet who is in ascendant, no matter that planet is good or not, that planet becomes beneficial. If the planet is good lords, good houses, then this planet gives you great name, fame, success, status, everything. And this planet is powerful also. He gives his nature trait behavior in the nature trait behavior of the native. So this is very, very good. On the other hand, the planet in 7th house, no matter how beneficial or how good the planet is, because this planet is setting a certain level of bad result, minimum, even if the planet is a lot of good house, beneficial planet, then at least... 20-30% of bad result this planet show. If the planet is actually a malefic planet, a lot of bad house, then what to say? Very terribly bad results this planet will indicate. So with respect to the things indicated by this planet, with respect to the things signified by the house lauded by this planet, with respect to the things which comes under the jurisdiction of natural significations of these planets, you should understand that bad results will be there. In the Dasha Antardasha of this planet connected to the 7th house, situated in the 7th house also, malefic result, bad results are there. That needs to be very, very clearly understood. And constant remedy for the pacification of this planet, which is in the 7th house, because the planet have turned bad, should be done. Otherwise, there will be problems. And because it is a setting planet, the planet is weak also. And because of weakness, whatever is signified by the planet, there will be weakness in those particular areas. For example, even if the seventh lord is in the seventh house, then even in that matter, the things related to seventh house will be weak and because of which the happiness of the marital life will be weak, the sustenance of the life with life partner will be weak and so on and so forth. If the eleventh lord goes into seventh house, then source of income is weak. Weak means the source of income is less and the source of income is also not constant. The source of income is also not permanent. This needs to be understood. Any planet who goes into Ascendant have a little bit of beneficence into it. Any planet in the Ascendant will have a little bit of beneficence into it. Good planet in the Ascendant is super, very brilliant, very good, very powerful. And every planet in Ascendant have strength. Because that is a rising planet. Even Digable in Saturn in the Ascendant gets strength, becomes powerful. Whereas any planet in 7th house have a little bit of maleficence in their nature. If the planet is already malefic, then the maleficence is, is increased multifold. 
and the planet also gets weak if the planet is already weak then the weakness is greatly increased and many a times if a weak planet is there in seventh house you will see that the planet is not able to give even 10 percent of its result even the most powerful planet in the seventh house will lose a little bits of its strength because the planet is setting this needs to be understood and the prediction should be made accordingly right how to make prediction for a strong planet how to make prediction for a weak planet what i think that you already know very well right so i am not explaining that in detail right but still if i have to give you a quick quick example the planet in the ascendant is very beneficial so good house lord fourth lord fifth lord ninth lord tenth lord or lagna lord itself when it goes into ascendant it makes the person very fortunate very lucky right on the other hand, if the second lord, eleventh lord, those who are indicating wealth, when they go to ascendant, they make the person very wealthy. So any planet who goes to ascendant already becomes a yoga karak, already becomes a yoga giver, yoga result giver, good result. Right. So naturally, then yoga will be second lord in eleventh house, eleventh lord in second house, okay. But anyhow, even if singular second lord goes into ascendant or eleventh lord goes into ascendant, it will become a single planet yoga. It will make the person very wealthy. In, even in those cases when the 8th Lord, 6th Lord, 3rd Lord, 12th Lord goes into Ascendant, now understand that because these are the Lord of Bad Houses going to Ascendant, they will afflict the Ascendant and because Ascendant is getting afflicted, defamation, bad name, fame, status, health problems, etc. will come. But this planet will be a significator of something. For example, if this planet is Sun, at least it is a significator of respect and the person will get respect in society. If this planet in Mars, then at least it is a significator for status and person will have a status in society. Even if this planet is Saturn, then at least the Saturn is significator of servant and hard work and the person will, will have the capacity to do hard work. The person will have servants until and unless the planet is very deeply afflicted. Right? So little bit to great amount of good result, the planet, whoever is going into ascendant gives and this planet becomes powerful also. So even if there is a debilitated planet in Ascendant or even if there is a digable heen planet in the Ascendant, in that scenario also, because see, weakness means weak result, right? Very little result to no result. Now, because Ascendant, as I told you, gives little bit strength to the planet. Any planet who is in Ascendant, no matter how weak it is, it cannot deny the result. For example, even if the seventh Lord Saturn goes into Ascendant, now he is already Digbalin. You say seventh Lord Saturn, when it will go into Ascendant, it will be either Leo or Cancer Ascendant. Saturn will also be into a Malefic Rashi. But despite that, because Ascendant gives a little bit of strength to the planet, now the seventh Lord weak may indicate dissatisfied sexual life may indicate weak life partner, diseased life partner, physically incompetent life partner, incompetent to sexually satisfy you. But it will not completely deny the marriage. Why? Because Lagna gives little bit of strength to planet. On the other hand, when it comes to seventh house, it gives a little bit of maleficence to the planet. That is very clear. So you will notice that despite the fact that seventh house is a Kendra, when we say that a connection between Kendra and Kona creates a Raj Yoga, we exclude the 7th house. We don't say that 7th Lord connected to 5th house or 7th Lord connected to 9th house make a Raj Yoga. We don't say that. right? Because of this particular reason that 7th house have maleficence in itself. right? So any planet when it goes to 7th house, Lagna Lord goes to 7th house, it may give you name, fame, status, it will make you popular but not at your birthplace. When the 4th Lord goes into 7th house or 10th Lord goes into 7th house, though they may give good result related to 4th house or 7th house, but any planet in 7th house gets little bit of maleficence and complete good result related to 4th house and 7th house will not, 4th house and 10th house will not be there. So in that case, what I have seen, even if 4th Lord goes into the 7th house, any planet goes into 7th house, full result cannot be felt. See, even if the 4th Lord is exalted in the 7th house, then you may either have property, home and good mother. Either one of one or two of it you can have. All the three things good you will not be able to have. Seventh Lord and fifth house, fifth Lord and seventh house. Either the person is intelligent or either the person have children. Ninth Lord in the seventh house, either the person is fortunate or the person have support of guru and father. Not all the things together. 
10th lord in 7th house either the person is popular or the person is respected or the person have good profession not all the three things together so any planet who comes into the 7th house they get little bit of maleficence and because of that little bit of maleficence complete good result related to the signification of the planet or complete good result related to the house lordship of the planet cannot be felt little bit of problem is already always there when bad house lords goes into seventh house third lord sixth lord eighth lord twelfth lord goes into seventh house in that particular scenario because seventh house in itself have maleficence it does not only destroy the seventh house see third sixth eighth twelfth lord goes into seventh house because these are the lords of the bad houses they will destroy the seventh house by destroying the seventh house they will destroy the chance they will destroy marriage marital life and other things but because seventh house in itself is a malefic house they in turn will disturb those houses which the planets own also for example when the sixth lord is going into seventh house now seventh house is destroyed because of sixth house significations right because sixth lord is going there so there will be enmity fights litigation etc with life partner in marriage but not only that because seventh house in itself is a bad house and sixth lord is going there it will make sure that sixth house is equally afflicted and seventh house indicates enmity seventh house indicates competition also right you are in the ascendant the one standing in front of you opposing you is seventh house so when the sixth lord goes into seventh house it makes sure that you have many enemies it makes sure that you have many competitions and because sixth lord in seventh house will also directly influence the ascendant it makes sure that you are always suffering from one disease or the other and this disease is very serious it is not something that can be easily ignored and one can live with it without going uh, going uh, going to a doctor one have to go to it when third lord goes into seventh house this is how you should understand the houses right this i am giving you a very very big secret this is how you should understand the house right if the third lord is coming into the seventh house what will happen the significations of third house are coming to the seventh house and third house is bad because of the signification so third house into a struggle third lord is coming into seventh house one have to struggle in marriage right third house indicate risk it is coming into seventh house so one have to take risk to sustain their marital life right third house indicates travel so one have to travel a lot or do a lot of physical exertion to save their marriage to sustain their marriage this will happen when the third lord is coming into seventh house but because seventh house in itself is malefic when the third lord comes into seventh house the complete result of hard work one is not getting right the relationship with siblings are not very good in this way you should understand that any planet if it is coming to the seventh house then in that particular scenario that planet will also suffer eighth lord is coming into seventh house now because of death because of ups and downs fluctuations in life and most importantly eighth house indicates bad luck so because of bad luck and luck is that thing that is out of your hands out of your control so because of bad luck death misfortune ups and downs in life marital life will be bad and because seventh house itself is a malefic house and eighth lord is there it will afflict the eighth lord also because of which longevity uh, can be curtailed health problems can be there and because eighth house also always already indicates misfortune and the eighth lord is going into a bad position one will be very misfortune unfortunate in life and even in those areas where the person you know where the person gives his 100% to save the areas even those areas will not be able to save and ultimately bad luck will hit those areas also in the same manner when the 12th lord is coming into 7th house then because of separation because of foreign context because of solace right and solace is you know your personal space because of your personal space your marital life becomes problematic 12th house like you know like life partner is very much intruding in personal space to save your personal space you have to remain away from your life partner or you have to you know stay away from your life partner 12th house also indicates separation so it will indicate that you may get separated from your life partner 12th house is sixth from the 7th house so fights litigations enmity with life partner can be there that is the thing but 7th house itself is malefic 
So because seventh house is malefic, it and, and when the twelfth lord comes into the seventh house, it will negatively influence the twelfth house also. So because twelfth house indicates expenditure and it is negatively influenced, the person will spend money but will not be able to get enjoyment. For example, person will spend money to purchase a car, but the car is more in garage and less on roads, right? 12th house indicates solace and when the 12th lord comes into 7th house, one cannot spend time in solace. One is constantly disturbed by people. One is not able to have time for themselves, etc. So such bad results are there. And why? Because 7th house in itself is malefic. This have to be understood very, very clearly. And the thing is that 7th house is marak also. Marak means death inflict. Now, technically, Marak does not always kill you. Two Marak houses are there. Second house is there. Seventh house is there. Now, why they are Marak houses? The houses of longevity are eighth and third. Many a times people say that eighth house is the house of death. No. Eighth house is the house of longevity. Now, being twelfth from the eighth house, loss of the eighth house, seventh house is Marak. And eighth from eighth is third house. Right. So, that is the longevity of longevity. Right. And 12th from it is the second house. So second house is also Marak. But which is the prime house of longevity? 8th house. So the major Marak is 7th house. Right. Now being a Marak house, what does it indicate? Marak means the killer. People think that killing is the death only. That is their killing is death. But other than that, many a times person is so greatly humiliated that they want to die. Or person goes in such a state in life where they have no respect, where they have no money, no income. In that case is also one will want to die. So all these conditions where the person starts thinking that it is better to die than to live this type of life is also a trait of Marak house. This have to be understood. Who is the Marak planet? One should understand the second Lord and seventh Lord are Marak planets. So generally, these planets are the killer in their dasha, antar dasha, one feels in such way that either one physically dies and how one will die, one dies because of disease also. So Marak planets can indicate death and death generally happens with loss of power. So they indicate loss of power, physical fatigue, weakness, etc. This they indicate and physical fatigue, weakness, death also happens because of disease. So this planet also gives disease in their dasha, antar dasha or disease related to whatever things they naturally signify. For example, if the seventh lord is Saturn, Sat if the seventh lord is Saturn and Saturn indicate bones, so disease related to bones can be there. Right? Disease can be there in the dasha, antar dasha of Saturn. This way this should be understood. And lastly, in the dasha, antar dasha of Saturn, because you know, death-like conditions that I was explaining, these death-like conditions can also be there and person may think that it is better to die than to live like this. Now, in this case, you should understand something. Seventh Lord and Second Lord are Marak planets that is there. The things that I have told you are very serious, very grave. So these things will only come when the Seventh Lord and Second Lord Marak house lords are afflicted because when the planet is afflicted, it gives a bad result. So death, everyone is going to die. Health problem, everyone have health problem. Right. Generally, you, you will have health problems in the Dasha Antar Dasha of Marak planet. One can die in the Dasha Antar Dasha of Marak planet also. Notice the word can die. No, not will die, can die. That is there. But such great humiliation that one thinks it is better to die than to live in this condition is not there in everyone's life. So let's understand the point. When the seventh lord is beneficial, when the seventh lord is good, exalted, multirkon, swarashi, varkottam, planet becomes good result giver. In this case, even in the dasha antar dasha of seventh lord, one will not die. Seventh lord and second lord, dasha antar dasha, marak planets, one will not die, but can face health problems. And because the planet is good, such condition that it was better, it is better to die than to live like this will never come. When the Marak planets are into a normal condition, not beneficial by being into exaltation, Bultrikon, Surashi, Varguttam, then in that particular scenario, one have normal thing, one will have health problems and the condition will start deteriorating from normal condition. So the person feel ashamed, etc. Does not go to the level of it is better to die, die than in living in such condition, but certainly the condition deteriorates as compared to what was there before. 
in that case when the marak house lords are afflicted also afflicted also when a planet becomes afflicted what happens the result of planet deteriorates the result of planet becomes bad even more bad so when the marak planet second lord seventh lord are further afflicted by malefics conjoined by malefics aspected by malefics and they are further weak also debilitated planetary war and all of these things then what may happen then this death signification of marak house may become very prominent one can die also can because multiple other principles are there and they cannot be explained in one astrological video keep that major health problems can come and when the marak house lords so seventh lord second lord our topic is seventh lord when the seventh lord is deeply afflicted by multiple malefics then one may in the dasha antardasha of the planet or related to the signification of the planet one may feel like it is better to die than to live into this condition see two times planet source result in the dasha antardasha of the planet the result of the planet will be there secondarily when you interact with the signification of planet for example saturn is the seventh lord so in the dasha antardasha of the saturn the result will be there or saturn is the significator of servants so while you are dealing with servants then this result will be there so your servants will make you feel like this these are the two times when the planets are activated when you interact with the planet and when the dasha antardasha of the planet runs so this is how you should understand the marak planets even the planet in marak house now the planet in marak house once again we go by the same concept if the planet in marak house is powerful then it means the planet is powerful to give result in this case because the planet is marak a powerful planet in marak house is more powerful to give the marak result it can give death it will give health problems but because the planet is powerful it will not make you feel like it is better to die than to live into this condition because the planet is powerful so your condition is also powerful but disease is also powerful so you only suffer from disease when the planet into marak house is weak then in that particular scenario because of disease a lot of weakness is there one may die as well and because the planet is weak the condition is weak and one starts thinking that it is better to die than to live into such condition now this feeling of it is better to die than to live into this condition can also come when the person is lonely when no one is there to help the person when no one is there to talk with the person and all of these conditions right multiple conditions can be there that you can think and understand yourself you have good knowledge of practical life i know that so that you can do and last but not the least marak means killer also and marak is technically killer so it is not only killer of the body it can be killer of a combination as well now see second house is marak and second house contributes into dhan yoga wealth combination but except for wealth combinations for the matters of raj yoga if the second lord is influencing the raj yoga right two planets are making raj yoga and one of that planet is second lord also then the raj yoga will not be 100% effective because the killing part is also coming the raj yoga will be maximum 80% effective or if two planets are making raj yoga and these two planets are getting conjoined or aspected by second lord also then the killing aspect of the second lord will come and it will destroy the raj yoga so destroying the raj yoga means the efficiency of the raj yoga will be reduced to 70 75.1 and secondarily in the dasha antardasha of the second lord the raj yoga will become faint the result of raj yoga may not be felt the result of raj yoga may disappear for the time being where a seventh lord because seventh lord does not contribute into dhan yoga and in raj yoga also it does not contribute so when the seventh lord is connected to planets making raj yoga it kills destroys the raj yoga also the marak effect is effective in raj yoga also so what happens the result of the raj yoga the effect of the raj yoga is greatly diminished to 0.1 and secondarily in the dasha antardasha of the seventh lord the provided the fact that the seventh lord is connected to the raj yoga making planets the result of the raj yoga may disappear for the time being or loss of the power may happen during the time being so whenever you are predicting loss of power loss of position defamation conditions where one will start thinking that it is better to die than to live in such conditions the consideration of marak houses and planets in marak houses becomes very important and seventh house is the prime marak so this you cannot ignore because when it comes to practical life there is more to life than marriage only 
right so seventh house becomes important in other regards as well so it have to be very carefully analyzed very carefully seen right and only looking at seventh house for marriage only right only looking at the seventh house for marriage only is only using seventh house for the only using seventh house for 80 percent of its caliber and not using 100 percent of caliber which anyone can do but you as my student and followers you at least should not right so keep this in mind make notes and study